But when you look at those who are telling you today that uh, Tiflumbu inherited a bad country, you will think it was uh, APP that handed over to APC or PDP handed over to Tiflumbu APC. It was Bukwari APC that handed over to Tiflumbu APC. The same people who told you then that Bokwari was building Nigeria. Give him time. There are those who have now metamorphosed to the Ronukus today. And they are the one telling you that Tifnumbu inherited a collapsed country. From who? Nigeria here. And then, God bless Bokwari. Bokwari is bringing Nigeria. Uh, I can't wait to fly in Nigeria here. I can't wait. I said, hang on. If you are going to start a hairline, a national career, there are some certain things we should be seeing. For example, we should be seeing them probably doing some recruitment, uh, training of uh, staff, uh, training of their pilots, recruitment of pilots and training and stuff like that. Uh, we should be able to have your websites that will tell us about your company, I mean, your office. We should be able to send in inquiries, ask questions. None of this was there other than Nebukwari succeed. All of you enemy of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. If they start Nigeria here, make you no know, fly am. Mm -hmm. Me, I can't wait to fly Nigeria here. This Uluri Brukus were gaslighting us. I say it was all fraud. Two days ago, fraud starts to Bokeyamo, who also happened to be a minister under Bukwari. He was a minister under Bukwari that destroyed Nigeria. They did it together. He is also a minister now under Tifnumbu. And he's just telling us that, you know, it wasn't that, it's not just that uh, the, the Nigeria here was a scam. It was actually a crime against Nigeria, a big crime against Nigeria. That's if you actually know what uh, this Sirika signed. I'll let him say it himself. Listen. Okay. So, put an outline. This is for the first time I'm showing Nigeria on this. This is, the, this is the master argument I have here, right here, right here. Look at wow. this. Argument right here. I will. You will be shocked to read that this, read this document. After some time, I'll make it public. I'm not hiding from anything. This is this is it here. I'll clause by clause. I don't need a lawyer to read it for me. 32 years of active, 33 years of active practice of law tells me what to say. This is the agreement. This is the Ethiopian Air Agreement here. And you'll be shocked if you look at this agreement. Mm -hmm. What it simply says is that and a foreign government should come and take over our national career. That is the long and short of the story. Because the Topian Air was a single major, major shareholder in that deal, a Topian Air. A Topian Air is owned by another government in Africa. It's the same thing they have done to Togo. Togo is a small country. They have done it with Askai. Askai, you know that Askai is saying it's owned by a Topian Air. We cannot be Togo. I apologize to whoever I'm talking I mean, for any Togo, but we cannot be Togo. We are big. We are big. We are ambitious. We cannot give up our entire ecosystem, aviation ecosystem, to another entity. Because what would have happened in that case is that Ethiopian, the Ethiopian government would now be in complete, complete beneficiary of all our BASA roads. Because a national carrier has first, first, you know, a priority choice over all our routes, all the BASA routes we have negotiated all over the world. So they come and will give them all those routes we have suffered to negotiate. Where will all those profits go? Where? It's not Nigeria. So all, I mean, like I said, I've said it's another forum <clears throat> where I saw the facilitator of that, the one American man, he had been crying, crying from one TV station to the other, one, uh, you know, blog to the other saying that we lost, well, we lost foreign direct investment. We did not lose any foreign direct investment. There was no investment. The investment they were going, they were going to bring their SS fleet or their list, they were going to list planes on ACMIs, on wet lists bring it here to fly our to fly our flag as national carriers. That's all they were going to do. And all the profit goes to Addis Ababa. And then who controls Nigerian air? Who? CEO, Ethiopian. Uh, financial officer, Ethiopian. Uh, director of operation of Ethiopian. All the key positions reserved for foreigners. Is that Nigerian air? Is that a, is that a national carrier? I ask. It's not. It's not. 
But don't forget that, apart from the government suspending need to look at it again, before we even look, the court came down and said, the court has declared it illegal. So it's not we now, it's not government. But you know, it's the judiciary. Go and argue with the judiciary. Go and argue with the judiciary that says it's illegal. So we saw the future. We knew, it's like we knew where the case was going. Mm -hmm. Right? So that is the thing. And then guess what? I've said so many things about this day. There are many. But like I said, I have the full documents here. All of the people, they said, all of the people coming to, from Addis Ababa to run it, they said they were not paying one tax to the Nigerian government. It's here, clause six. Really? Clause six, that they will not pay one single tax to the Nigerian government. How about it? Clause six, yes. All tax tax exemptions for all those coming, including who pay Not only make capital tax or against that, pay ye, pay ye, pay ye tax. They should not do that. If, they even say if the law changes, pay ye, they will not pay. Yeah. <laughs> So what is the investment now? What are you bringing there? They are not going to bring any build any infrastructure, no commitment, full commitment to build a hub so we can even employ Nigerians. No, no commitment to that regard. And then guess what? After all this has happened, there's a clause that now says Nigeria will still guarantee any loss that they lost. Nigeria will not be the guarantor to any loss they suffer. Mm -hmm. that is, despite our mega five that we have, Nigeria deserves only 5% that day. But that 5% they say we should be the guarantor to any loss. So if they call any debt, they suffer any loss, they get into a contract and there is a breach of contract, there are billions of dollars awarded against Nigeria, and who we pay? Nigeria, not Ethiopian air. We are guarantors. No. <laughs> Somebody signed that as aviation minister of Nigeria, Addis Sirika, on Dabokuari. Those are the lovers of Nigeria, people that, that love Nigeria. They will tell you, we are working hard to make this country great. All of you are, you are, you are tarnishing the image of the country. People like us are called enemies because exposing them eh, means that we don't love Nigeria. They love Nigeria. You are right. Uh, Director Scott, you know that his own, his own Yan, she's actually outside already, even before he will leave office. Uh -huh. Frost also to Bukeyamo. Have you forgotten? Now, that guy promised uh, 1,000 jobs for the youth when he was a minister of work, I mean, minister of labor. I bet it by me. 774 local government areas, 1,000, 1,000 youths, 774,000 jobs. Now, don't forget, where are the jobs today? It was the guy who, who gave them a uh, uh, we barrows, cutlass, and pong pong, eh, that they will be paying some youths 20, 20, 25,000 era every month under Bukwari to create 774,000 jobs. Don't tell me you have forgotten that. I, you know me, I know they forget. I know they forget. So he's running, his, he's running the show as aviation minister now on that if number. So you think there is no scam going on too? We go. Yeah, I mean, it's just that this one that you just exposed, that is the one I want us to pay attention to. That somebody signed off that kind of deal. And then they were deceiving Nigerians that were praying for them. That Nigeria here, Nigeria here. And we said it's all scam. It's a scam. Maybe because we're just too blunt and too honest. Eh? And they believe that we just don't wish Nigeria well. These people don't wish Nigeria well. There are many deals like that, oh. Mm -hmm. I mean, you are hearing this uh, court of arbitration in the UK. Eh? They're making judgment or declaring different judgment that they are putting Nigeria in debt. Who are those who signed them? Well, those who are signing those, they are the political appointees of different governments in that contraption. The supposed lovers of Nigeria. And this Erika is working about right now. He's probably a leader in his own community in Kebi. I think he's from Kebi. The place he built himself uh, Emirates, like that. Yeah, he built himself this palace estates. The minister. People that are supposed to actually be standing trial and their conviction should be death sentence, death sentence. 
you know? But rather, they are working free as we speak. APC to APC. APC to APC. See what they've done to Nigeria. Eh? A school submitted budget of 368 million naira. That's what we did. The House of Assembly approved 42 billion naira. They parted it. 42 billion naira. Do you see the difference? That's like 41 points. Eh? 41.6 Three two billion naira extra money that will just go straight into the pocket of other people over projects that doesn't exist. This was supposed to be a school. Eh? Federal College of Horticulture, Radinkoa in Gombe State. They wrote their budget and submitted it to. It was 368 million. By the time the National Assembly will pass the budget, they passed 42 billion. 42 billion. So that this school can go and install solar street lights eh, in federal constituencies in Oshun, Edo, Bauchi, Nasarawa, Oshun, Oyo, Lagos, and Kogi State. Construction of block of classroom, solar street lights, boreholes, and provision and installation of transformers. In federal constituencies, supply and installation of solar powered boreholes in federal constituencies in Kebi, Oyo, Kasina, Benue, Akwa Ibom, Edo, Skuwe de Gombe. If I tell you the enemy, if I show you the enemies of Nigeria, I also do tell you their names and I show you their faces too. But somehow, somehow, you think say so now we know which Nigeria well. Nigeria is not destined to be great or to be well. If not, these rogues will be in jail awaiting the hangman's and news. But they are there in the Agbada, you know, moving about like that. We are the leaders. And that's why the people that are supposed to be under the watch list, they are the ones putting other people in under, I mean, in a watch list. You just want to destroy this country. You just stage out these people. You want to really? Sad. I wish this works though, by the way. I saw a group of uh, uh, elders somewhere in uh, Equerry or so in River State. They said they are invoking the spirit of this, this and that to go after those who were burning down the properties of uh, the government. They are talking about the really weakest uh, supporters. And I was like, does this work? I really wish it works. I don't think so. Here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay.
The more you look, the less you see. The more you look, the less you see. The more you look, the less you see. I mean, I do understand Igbo, like proper. I'm almost like totally novice, except the greetings in Igbo. But I know that if not for the identity crisis, which uh, the Nigeria genocidal war caused, eh? Those people are Igbos. Mm -hmm. But hey, they will fight you and say, no, we are not Igbos and all that. But generally, your parents, they are Igbos. Okay? And nobody really needs to kind of like force it on you. Say, we know why a lot of you are fighting what is called the identity crisis. All right? But yeah. I hope, I mean, I hope they have the same spirit to uh, invoke, to go after the rogues mm? that have made life hell for you in that contraption. Talking about the egos, do you know that they had, I don't know if this is a recent uh, video, but it is very significant, where, you know, they had what is called a mock referendum for Biafra by the Igbos, for the Igbos, who resides in Lagos. You seen this? So I got down, I was like, oh, that's impressive. Yes, it is ongoing, it is happening live. Biafrans are ready to go. Biafrans are ready to go. The referendum is going on. Everyone is eager to participate in it. Just a short notice in this very house, the whole neighborhood has converged with interest for this election. Their friends are voting here in Lagos. I'm 
enemies. Mm -mm. I don't want to use different phone. I said it earlier on that only one phone. Mm -hmm. Don't use too many phones. The video is off your own. Okay. <laughs> A very massive anaconda line of their friends. Only to participate in the Biafra self-referendum physical voting. See, I do understand uh, that uh, uh, some of you have allowed yourselves, okay, to have uh, been pitted against yourselves. And I won't probably be part of that, all right? There is something I meant about uh, a mock Referendum. When I say mock referendum, it simply means that if people were allowed, right, to actually participate in what is called a referendum, it doesn't matter where there are those that will stand up, right, and choose not Nigeria. But since some of you want to turn them into your Simon Epa, as I said, the others, okay, so I'm just going to stop the video. That's not the intention. I knew that it was actually the Simon Epa group, as you would say it. But when did you become so divided about your Biafra, so to say? To the point that, uh, I mean, I've said that before. On social media, you have turned yourself into me versus you, you versus me. And there's so many horrible, horrible, horrible things that you are saying to yourselves. And that is why. That first person that said, oh, you are promoting Simon Ekwa today. I was like, no, you, you don't belong here. Get the hell out of here. Because it's always about you versus you, we versus you. And that never used to be the same sort of a Biafra agitation that I got to know years back. You've made a mess of it, some of you. And it's now about a competition, rivalry. Eh? And whoever is not in this camp is the enemy of that camp. Is uh, this is about that and all that, so you can get the other of here. So let's, there's no point in showing you the rest of it. Mm -hmm. Now let's leave that and go to something else. Now, uh, I picked up something, okay, on uh, what is it called from the airport, so to say, and it is about uh, this person who they said was coming back from uh, was it Singapore or something. And he was caught with a uh, heroin worth uh, 3.1 billion. But when I was like, who kind of valued it? Who did the valuation? But Nigeria is a hub. Put it that way.
Eroin lati Thailand. Eroin. Nigeria is uh, battling with uh, what you call the uh, drug uh, epidemic. Young, young people across Nigeria have been hooked on different kinds of uh, drugs. Eroin, I mean, Eroin is uh, possibly the rich 